Hey everybody, um, this is a quick update video to the uh, polygraph uh, teardown that uh, I posted up the other day. Um, what I've been doing since then, I've uh, stripped, and it'll probably make a few people cry, I know, but uh, I've stripped down the Model 7D polygraph. The remains of that are over in that pile there. Um, I am just about to take apart this chart recorder, uh, which was just on its own. Um, so that's going to get stripped. Um, but the good news is that uh, I've left the uh, Model 78D, which is just here off camera. Um, that is as I took uh, possession of it. In fact, it's actually in better condition now. Um, I've been um, fixing it up, putting screws back, um, putting things back where they should be. Um, so what I'm going to do is get all this lot stripped down and cleared out because I need this the space to park our car in here. Um, so that means that once I've done that, I will be able to take a really, really good look at the Grass um, uh, Model 78D. Um, and I should be able to do that in good detail um, and um, take, take my time over it and actually make quite a nice, interesting video on that one. So this is the unit as it is at the moment. I've uh, reinstalled the pens which were missing. Um, they, uh, they've all been pulled off the other chart recorders. Um, a lot of the pens are a bit damaged and stuff. Um, I found a couple of boxes of um, graph paper um, and I've basically been just tidying up all the stuff that was actually on the, uh, the front here. So um, let's just have a quick look around it. So this here is the um, plug panel. Um, this is the bit that connects into the actual front of the unit. Um, I believe this should actually be installed in a um, like a freestanding trolley thing, um, but obviously it's missing all that. There's a couple of there's some screw holes where it, it would have been mounted onto something. So again, I think um, somebody was actually trying to uh, dismantle this or repurpose it for some reason um, before it was uh, it was sent to salvage so uh, not quite sure why that's like that but I'm glad that I've got it well right, I've just turned the uh, the unit round so we're, we're looking in the back of it at the moment um, down here we have uh, the power supply um, this is the power supply for the actual chart recorder um, and there's a pass-through cable which connects up into the, um, the the actual rack unit which is mounted on the top of it. So in the back here I've uh, actually found and reinstalled the, um, the rear covers. So in the back here I've tidied up uh, a lot of the cables, plugged everything back into this power distribution panel which is just down the uh, down the side here, um, and just generally sort of reconnect every, everything up where it should uh, should be, or where I believe it should be anyway. So you can see on the back of these modules, there's whole loads of uh, little adjustment pots and um, extra outputs and various things. Okay, if we head back around to the front here, I'll just run through um, the various things that I've managed to sort of kind of infer from uh, looking and playing around with uh, with this. Um, what we have at the, this section here um, seems to be all the actual inputs. Um, so each input which comes from the patch panel that you saw earlier, um, that would connect to all the different probes and sensors that would be attached to the, the, uh, the device under test or the human. Um, those would uh, be very varied, there'd be lots of them. Um, so they come, the analog signal comes into um, into this unit here. This is a low level DC preamp. Um, we have three of these on this particular machine. Um, this takes the um, sort of the, the raw signal and um, is a preamp that's fed into the main DC driver amplifier. Um, oh, it's actually this amplifier here which drives the voice coil in the actual pen. So all these uh, these bits here are all pretty much fixed, um, but these modules here are interchangeable, and you can actually take them out and swap them with different types of um, 
amplifier depending on what you want to actually want to uh, monitor. Um, like for example here we've got um, an EKG tachograph preamp. Now if you didn't need um, that and you wanted some other kind of uh, amplifier you can just take this out and swap it with um, whichever module you actually need to use. So the input modules are obviously set up so each one has its own specific set of controls um, to do what, uh, whatever it's designed to do. Um, these three modules here are low level DC preamps, I think these are sort of fairly generic. Um, next one down, as I said, we have the EKG tachograph preamp, um, so that's for doing um, heart rate. Uh, next one down we have a wideband AC preamp and integrator. Um, so that has a whole set of different different options and then finally this one here is a polygraph integrator. Um, now you note this one doesn't actually have an input on it or certainly not one from directly from the patient. I think what is intended to happen with this one is you would patch in an output from one from one of these modules into the integrator which then gives you a another pen um, output onto the chart recorder. So there's various options on this um, this integrator, you've got um, rectification options and time integration and things like that. So, And a bit further down uh, we have these modules here, there's one, two, three, four, five of them. Um, why that doesn't match up to the number of um, amplifiers I don't know, um, but these are titled um, EEG amplifier for data processing. Um, now interestingly these are only attached to the power supply in the back. Um, there's no um, signal transport between the amplifiers and the um, preamps into these. So again I think these are expected to be patched in um, using cables on the front here. Um, we have various um, data in, out and other little connections here. There's a external connection there. So I think these would be plugged into the uh, the driver amps with little patch cables which um, I don't have. As I said the, these don't appear to be attached to um, any of the signal transport in the back um, but the, these all do connect through to this particular unit which is the next bit down um, which is a um, master record and playback control um, with uh, playback sensitivity um, knobs on the front. So I think what this does is take the outputs from the um, the amplifiers um, and you can sort of tweak um, the exact signal and then this gets sent out via um, a big multi-way connection on the back of this to some other device which does a data processing. Exactly what that is I have no idea. Um, probably a little bit more research I might be able to figure that out um, whether it's recorded onto tape or into a computer or something I don't know it's um, I'm not entirely sure but given that there is actually record and playback then there must be some kind of uh, recording device um, so I think you can send the outputs off to be recorded and you can also play them back through this um, and presumably that output would then come out onto uh, the chart recorder. So the next section down is uh, the power supply. This is the power supply for the, the rack unit. Um, the power supply for the chart recorder is, is around the back, you saw that earlier. Um, this is a separate power supply just for the rack unit. So if we have a quick look at the chart recorder, um, we've got this uh, plastic cover here. Um, these are the actual pens. Um, these are removable. Um, they're just a very, very thin, flimsy piece of aluminium, very light, um, with a small capillary pen, which actually draws on the paper um, with a small tube which connects to the inkwell, which is just here. These are obviously all dried up and uh, there's nothing left in those. So um, each of the pens has a voice coil and each one of those is connected to the uh, DC driver amplifier which uh, I showed you earlier. Um, so these uh, would move backwards and forwards 
on the paper to actually create the uh, create the chart. Now, obviously, the uh, the paper is fed up through the bottom, comes through this section here, and it's actually pulled along the uh, the base um, by this little motor drive thing here. It's variable speed that you can change the speed between uh, 1.5 millimeters per minute, which is really really slow. Um, all the way up to 60 millimeters a second, um, so that would be moving fairly, fairly quickly. As I mentioned earlier, there's um, for each of these pens, there's a driver amplifier, but you can probably already see that there's 10 pens installed on this this machine. Why there is more pens than you have driver amplifiers, I'm not entirely sure. Right, so that um, that really is as far as I've managed to get so far. Um, I've not made a huge amount of progress in sort of figuring it out yet, but I've been concentrating on getting the um, the chart recorder and the other polygraph stripped down, so I've actually got a space in my container. Um, so hopefully in the next uh, next couple of weeks I'll have a little bit more info on this, um, and I might just be able to turn it on. Um, I need to uh, run through and check the power supplies because they probably haven't been turned on in a very very long time. So. Um, those are going to need checking out before I start um, putting 240 volts into them. Um, but once that's done, um, there's a small possibility this might actually do something. Uh, and then I'll have to figure out what I'm going to do with it, whether I continue to st um, strip this down um, or whether I actually try and sell it on. Um, I don't think you could sell it as a working system, but you know, there may be somebody interested in um, having a play around with it. Okay, thanks for watching everybody. I'll uh, see you on the next video. See you later.